The future of medicine was being discussed today on the campus of MIT, a place that many consider to be the heart of biotech. Doctors, investors and executives all converged for the first ever STAT summit to find ways to push the limits of what's possible in healthcare. Our Meg Terrell was there. Artificial intelligence was a key focus. Daphne Kohler, CEO of AI startup Incitro, said the technology can enable things humans can't do. It turns out that computers are much better at seeing these subtle signals in cells than people are, and they're also a lot less biased. They don't come in with a preconception of what makes uh, for a good or bad intervention or what makes for a sick or healthy cell, and therefore they find patterns that people will never see. Her company is working with drug giant Gilead to find new medicines for the liver disease NASH. Industry experts also weighed in at the conference on new approaches to cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and depression. We've already completed two pivotal programs, one in major depressive disorder and another in postpartum depression. Both of those showed very rapid response and, 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 and durability of response, even though we only use the drug for, for two weeks. But as the industry is pursuing its highest science yet, it's also grappling with an existential problem, its reputation. Nick Leshley, CEO of Bluebird Bio, said the industry's poor standing with the public is partly its own fault, as some companies, primarily makers of older biologic drugs that draw billions of dollars a year, reap outsized profits. We need to make sure that the reward over time actually is not egregious, right? And that's what we're trying to make sure the upfront industry is doing better at, and it's not. We've, there's some behaviors that still go on in our industry that are simply not good enough. His company, which is still unprofitable, just introduced a new one-time gene therapy for the rare blood disease beta thalassemia. Its price? $1.8 million. But he argues that price makes sense for a one-time treatment for a very rare disease. If we have a whole bunch of cures that come out through gene therapy and other modalities, as a human being, that's exactly where we want to go. You're right, we have to figure out how do we pay for it. But don't forget, all these diseases cost an amazing amount of the system. So if you zoom out one notch and say paying a certain amount up front for a potential cure and then they have a lifetime savings, the pharmacoeconomics were sort of what the sort of the what should you be willing to pay for that actually on each of these medicines is tremendous. Meanwhile, Washington is at work on drug pricing as well. Industry CEOs said a plan from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to cap drug prices would mean Wall Street interest in funding new medicines would slow. The vast majority of work to develop a drug comes from private private resources. Um, I think if we, you know, it's highly risky. Of course you'll have a chilling effect on investment. To avoid more regulation, the industry says it needs to be better at self-policing. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Meg Terrell in Cambridge, Massachusetts.